I can fully understand you if you think that how I'm treating my LG CX right now, it's not fair. And I, I fully agree with you. I am feeling bad displaying the Samsung QD OLED on my LG CX. That's not an easy task, but at some point in life, we need to move on. And that's why we're here today. We are moving on or I'm moving on and I'm replacing my LG ZX with the brand new Samsung S95B. And I like to make it very, very clear. I will not sell my LG ZX. I will do a lot of comparison videos between the LG ZX and the S95B as soon I got the TV because right now I do not own the TV, but I gathered or I have actually enough information that I can tell you with a very high confidence why this TV should be on your most wanted list. Before we start now, I like to give a very big shout out to two YouTube channels, Keep It Classy Tech and Tech with KG, because they're just offering great content around TVs, not just around the Samsung S95B, but especially the last days around this TV actually, because uh, this is amazing. This is just amazing, this TV. So do me a favor, jump over to the YouTube channels, um, subscribe, uh, leave a like, watch the videos, because again, this is great content. You get informations, uh, information without S, information on those channels you can't get anywhere else in terms of side-by-side -side comparison, in terms of testing, in terms of so many things, you can't find them on any other YouTube channel. I promise you this, okay? So make sure you check out those channels because they deserve much more subscribers. Okay, so let's start. What is so great on the new Quantum Dot QD OLED? Quantum Dot, that's the yeah, marketing name from Samsung. What is so great on this new OLED TV? Because at the end, it is just an OLED TV, right? All right, but with a few yeah, improvements, okay? So let's have a very quick look on this um, um, yeah, PDF here. And by the way, credit goes to avcesar.com where I borrowed or well, copy and pasted this. Yeah, thank you very much for this. Anyway, on the left-hand side, you can see the conventional OLED TVs like the LG CX, C1, C2, and also the G2. This is the pixel layout from those TVs, OLED TVs. So they have this um, four, for us, um, pixel the white one for yeah to improve the maximum peak brightness. Okay, so let's say like this, and um, maximum peak brightness, they putting this in or on the on the sheet here on uh, around 1000 nits, which is crazy bright. Actually, I have never measured 1000 nits on my TV, but to be very honest, I'm not quite sure if I ever measured a 1% wide window because this is what we're talking about. 1% wide window and then you get 1500 nits on the new QD OLED TV compared to the conventional OLED TV like the LG ZX. Let's have a closer look on the right hand side where you can see the new pixel structure. And by the way, this is not quite right because the pixel structure from the QD OLED TV looks like this and not like this. But anyway, we have actually three colors uh, RGB, red, green, and blue, compared to the WRG layout on the conventional OLED TVs, W for white, and then the RGB layout, okay? So we have less pixel actually, but more brightness, and not just brightness. So brightness is one thing, okay? I'm happy that this TV has a much higher peak brightness for my future HDR testing, but brightness is not all because, oh, let's say like this, white brightness for 10% white window and whatever. This is a nice, nice to have, but the most impressive thing is actually here that the peak luminance from the colors is actually tripled or well, three times higher compared to the conventional OLED TV and this is what makes this Samsung TV so great because it's not just around uh, about the peak brightness but because of the peak brightness we have now the color gamut we can almost have 
we have almost 100%, okay, it's 90%. It's not almost, okay, 90% from the BT2020 color gamut compared to 76% from the conventional OLED TVs. And that's a big jump. That's a crazy jump. And not just like this, the, P, uh, the DCI P3 um, color gamut, which is um, still used in probably 80, 90, 95% of the time in games and movies. Uh, we, can, we have now 123% of this color gamut, of this color um, format. This is great because here, I mean, 94%, yeah, it's very close, but still not 100%. So you missed all the time color information, okay? And now with the QD OLED TV, this is not a problem at all anymore. Okay, so let's move on to some basic information about the Samsung S95B in terms of yeah, HDMI ports, stuff like that, okay? First of all, um, unfortunately, the Samsung S95B is just available in 55 inch and 65 inch, and this is maybe a deal breaker for some people. Not for me, thanks God, because I'm more than happy with a 65 inch TV because of my room here, it's not very big, so I'm sitting actually around 1.8 meter yeah away from the tv around 1.8 meter okay so it's, it's actually very close so i'm more than happy with a 65 inch tv and yeah but maybe at some point we will see bigger sizes i'm quite sure if this tv is um, going to be uh, sold very often i'm quite sure samsung will release different sizes as well Anyway, uh, moving on, number of HDMI ports, which is very important uh, to me, four, four HDMI ports. And by the way, the HDMI standard is 2.1 and we have a full bandwidth of 48 gigabits for all the HDMI ports because, thanks God it's 48 now, because we know how much trouble we had with the LG ZX because it's just 40 gigabits per second. I'm just very sarcastic here. But anyway, this is very good because now we have 48 gigabits per second for whatever we need this. I have literally no idea because yeah, the Xbox Series X is not using 48 gigabits, the PlayStation 5 not, and even you have a 3090 Ti, no. Anyway, it's good to have, okay? Don't get me wrong. So what else do we have? We have HGHG. It is not ticked here, but we have HGHG. But as far as I know, and what um, Keep It Classy uh, Tech and Tech with KG and also Vincent already confirmed is that HGIG, HGIG is not working as on the LG ZX TVs. And what that means is that even when you have enabled HGIG in yeah, the game mode, you will have tone mapping like dynamic tone mapping, sort of, okay? So, and it was very clear uh, to see that when you uh, try to yeah, set up the uh, HDR calibration menu on the PlayStation 5, usually at some point when you have HGIG enabled on the LG ZX, it will just stop and you, you don't see any, any pattern anymore. It's, it's done and then, then you know it's actually correct. But for or the Samsung S95B is doing some tone mapping in the background and it is just a ridiculous high setting, okay? It has nothing to do with the maximum peak brightness from the TV. This is something where I'm a little bit concerned about because I'm, um, I'm buying this TV because of HDR and I'm a big fan of HGIG. And yeah, HGIG is not supposed to have the, any tone mapping. You know what I mean? It, it, not dynamic. It's, it's tone mapping, of course, HGIG. It's sort of, don't do this, but not like dynamic tone mapping like on the LG. I don't know why this is happening and maybe there will be a fix, hopefully, a firmware update, hopefully. And yeah, that's the concern what I have at the moment, but maybe um, Classy or, or KG can confirm or can actually tell me it is not a big deal and HDI is fine, okay? Anyway. Um, the one downside what this TV has, what many, many people talking about is um, Dolby Vision. But to be very honest, I don't think this is a big loss at all. 
at least not for gaming because my experience so far with Dolby Vision, yes, we have a couple of games where Dolby Vision has an advantage over HDR10, but it is so minor, it is so minor. The, um, and even games like Halo Infinite, which are supposed to have um, native Dolby Vision, are looking bad, absolutely bad. I mean, Dolby Vision in this game is broken, full stop, okay? And I don't know why, but this is a different story. Um, it is not a big loss for me in terms of games. Movie-wise, uh, that's a, that's a different story, of course, because we have a lot of series, a lot of movies in Dolby Vision. And yes, if the movies are mastered with a very nice Dolby Vision, there is an advantage over HDR10. That's, that's how it is, because the technology behind Dolby Vision is just better compared to HDR10, okay? Not HDR10+, plus. That's something different, but most of the time you have HDR10. So I, there, I think there is not a single game, by the way, which supports HDR10+. Plus. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think that's the case. Anyway, for me personally, not a deal breaker. It is, yeah, I, I would like to have it, of course, Dolby Vision, to have also to do testing with a much higher peak brightness. But yeah, that's how it is. And it's not a deal breaker for me. And of course we have freezing support or HDMI VR support on the Samsung as well. And um, there is no G-Sync support. That's not true. There's no native G-Sync. So we have G-Sync support on the LG ZX as well. And I'm quite sure we have G-Sync support as well here because G-Sync support just means we have HDMI VR support. And this is all what we need. We don't need to have FreeSync. Uh, native freezing, I call it like this, it's an open standard, there's no native freezing, okay? It's all about HDMI verbal refresh rate and I proved this already in a video that there is literally not a single difference on my LG ZX between HDMI VRR freezing or if I'm playing in a cheesing supported mode like the um, from my uh, PC with the 3070 Ti it's a cheesing supported mode for HDMI VRR so there is literally no difference at all on the LG ZX okay and I'm very sure if they have done the right thing there's no difference on the Samsung as well not in terms of uh, yeah any stuttering or stuff like that. I'm not quite sure about the low uh, frame rate com compensation on the Samsung, but uh, again, on the LG ZX, this is just working perfectly. And unfortunately, I can't provide you any range in terms of freezing, but I would say, I would think it is more likely the same range as on the LG OLED TVs, which is 20 to yeah, 120 Hertz. So let's talk about the frequency of this TV here. And uh, it is mentioned actually with 144 Hertz, but uh, a couple of YouTube channels already confirmed they are not able to run the display with 144 Hertz. Even it is here mentioned again, 4K 144 Hertz, HDR10. Um, not quite sure if this is because we're missing maybe a firmware update or what is behind this because according to Samsung it is a 144 Hertz panel but right now it is limited to 4k 120 Hertz which is fine because Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 yeah, they do not support higher frame rates than 120 Hertz anyway and for the PC to be very honest for me personally 120 Hertz is enough and the jump from 120 to 144 that just means I need I really need a 3090 Ti. So let's talk about input lag and credit for this goes to HTV test. Vincent measured all the yeah, nice numbers here. And in the 60 Hertz mode, we have actually three options for input lag, fast, faster and fastest. And just the fastest option will disable Game Motion Plus completely, okay? And the first two options, you have Game Motion Plus enabled or sort of different options and stuff like that. You can, I think, um, yeah, define options as well, like shutter and stuff like that. But those two or the first two options are having or yeah, using Game Motion Plus to improve gameplay from 30 FPS games, okay? I haven't tried this on 
the Samsung TV so far because I still don't own, it, own the TV unfortunately. I have tried it on the LG ZX, I'm not a big fan but maybe it's completely different on the Samsung. Okay. Anyway, um, in the fast mode which with uh, Game Motion Plus enabled we have yeah let's say 19 milliseconds which is not great but again game motion plus means we have a 30 fps game and it feels or it looks like a 30 a 60 fps game okay so this is what game motion plus can do if it is the same as on the lg zx with the motion setting or whatever it is called anyway um with the faster option we have already just 13 milliseconds and by the way this is the 60 fps a uh, 60 hertz mode okay so on the lg zx in the 60 hertz mode without game motion we have 14.7 or something like that let's say 14 milliseconds so you can see on the samsung with game motion plus enabled sort of there are a couple of um, options enabled we have actually a lower input lag already than the LG ZX without any motion settings. And then we have the fastest options, uh, option which is just 9.2 milliseconds in the 60 hertz mode. And this is really crazy. This is crazy fast because now we have the 120 hertz mode. And as you can see here, 4.7 milliseconds. This is more than enough. One of the best features in my opinion on the Samsung TVs is the game bar for gamers as you can see here because you have all the necessary information in this little bar like uh, what input lag you have select and also for me personally for future testing of course uh, what is the frame rate actually when you play games with VRR enabled so I'm looking forward to use this feature a lot. Okay so let's talk about the downside from the new pixel structure on the yeah, QD OLED TVs from Samsung. And I need to be careful here because I haven't seen any QD display, QD OLED display so far. So I can just repeat or I can just show you what I can find on the, yeah, on the web. And yeah, this is most likely not the same what you can see in, in real on the TV, okay? But let's talk about this because there maybe there is really a downside in terms of when you're using or when you like to use this TV uh, for office um, work, okay? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm using my LG ZX for office work a lot. I'm working from home sometimes, I'm using this TV, I'm doing all my editing stuff on this TV and there is no problem at all because the picture, or sorry, the pixel layout is completely different and I will show you this, okay, what I'm talking about, okay. So this is the layout from the QD OLED TVs, okay. So you have the green subpixel on top, then you have the red on the left side and the blue on the um, right hand side and uh, this is how it looks like, okay. So, but the problem is now when you have lines like this, and I know it's a little bit unsharp, but as you can see, you can actually see all the colors. You can clearly see all the colors, not just the white in the middle. So when all the subpixels are um, enabled, then you have actually white, but because they are yeah, far away, you can see on the edges, you can see all the colors. And this is what, what is called fringe, I think. Um, fringe, I think that, that was the name. Anyway, and this is what people, they're not complaining, but uh, they're saying, hey, when you have text now and you use text, then this can be a problem because it will just look a little bit weird, okay? So let's have a very quick look on the normal, Arch, on a normal RGB structure from a yeah, normal LCD screen or stuff like that. So you have um, RGB, red, green, and blue, and they're also very, very um, close together. So, and they are actually in this um, horizontal um, line, okay? So not uh, like, the, like the QD OLEDs, uh, like in a triangle. So they are actually in, the, in one line, okay? So that means it looks like this. You don't have any colors on top of, on the line. Okay, just left and right, you can see blue and red, of course, because I mean, it is actually uh, absolutely the same. You have um, red and blue and together and green together means it is white. But because red and blue is outside or on the edge, you can see those colors here as well. But 
I mean, I'm using LCD screens as well, not just this one, also in uh, the other office and I haven't found this issue at all, never ever, okay? So there was never ever any problem because also uh, Windows clear type can actually uh, help to prevent this problem as well, okay? So again, this can be a problem, can be, but maybe not. So again, I need to see this with my own eyes before I can have actually my own opinion. At this very moment, on this picture, it looks awful to be very honest, but this is very close. Yeah, this is a picture taken very close to the screen. And yeah, again, I have to see this with my own eyes. Right now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see a problem at all. So for sure not when you use this TV for movies or games, because um, even you have text in games, the text is like this big, okay? So there's no way that you can see fringe or fringing or whatever the name is on those on this text. No way. And in movies with um, moving uh, objects all the time, no way, okay? So no worries at all. I don't think this is a big problem. And now after all the talking, after all the basic information, I think it is time that we watch some footage. And yeah, I bought some video uh, footage from Keep It Classy um, Tech and also from Tech with KG. So check this out. Uh, this image should just speak volumes. This is how it looks. LG C1 on the left and the S95B on the right. This is probably the biggest generational leap in TV technology that we've ever gotten. But I am going to point out some of the negatives. Uh, most of it is just more Samsung specific. Uh, one, it does seem that it's kind of common already for you to pull it out of the box and the panel to be bent. Uh, my panel is pretty flat from the bottom up to about two thirds of the way up. And then it has a slight bend going up to the top of the panel. Uh, enough that this one it would definitely be returned. So quality control, that's a problem. And then black crushing is a little bit worse than the LGs out of the box. Uh, all you really have to do is bump your shadow detail two clicks up and then it's about right. So it's a super easy fix. Like even just loading up a WB movie and seeing this, that yellow is just a strong, pure, bright yellow and it starts to turn white on the LG. All right, so back to the weaker sides of things, the gradients or color banding, things like that. It's a little bit worse on the Samsung and there's no control to fix that. All right, so if I look at the tone mapping for individual colors, starting with red on the C1, it only goes up to about 350 when it goes all the way to 1000 on the S95B. And then for green, it's about 750, 800 on the C1, but 1600 on the S95B. Then for blue, it's 800 on the C1 and 1200 on the S95B. Then moving into the secondaries with cyan, it's 750 on the C1 and about 17, 1800 on the S95B. Now that's not how bright the colors get, that's the tone mapping that it's capable of, so the detail of bright colors. That's the difference that that points out. And then for magenta, I'm seeing about 500 on the C1 and 1200 on the S95B. And then lastly for yellow, the C1 about 1700 and the S95B 2000. All right, so you can see here with the luminance loading test on the Spears and Munzel disc, how the S95B stays brighter pretty much the entire range. And especially as it gets smaller, it just really gets ahead. Now, the QD OLED in HDR really just makes the WRGB OLED not look HDR if they're next to each other. And especially when it comes to anything from green to red and in between yellows, oranges, bronzes, it's just a huge, huge difference. A couple years ago, when I bought my first OLED TV, coming from an old LCD TV, I was amazed. My thoughts were just, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I thought that I would never have that feeling again. 
flash forward to now, and I feel like I'm having that feeling about times five. That's how good the QD OLED is. I'm not even kidding you guys. The S95B has completely destroyed all of my TVs. I have the Q90B, the LG C2, the A80J all right next to each other. And the S95B killed it. And I have a couple of examples to show you. All right, so let's continue on with my S95B first impressions and then we'll get on to what I see in some of these examples. But until then, you can enjoy those examples in the background while I talk about the S95B and just how great it is. Here we're coming up on a scene that everybody loves. It's the fire breathing man from the Samsung demo. Look at the fire. That's all I have to say. It comes across pretty good on the camera. Um, in person, it's even better. And you can see that the WRGB OLED, it just cannot keep up. And that's unfortunate, but that's just how it is when you get new technology. All right, so let's look closer at the fire on this scene. So as you can see on the C2, it almost looks like it's just a whole different entire grade, but this is run through a splitter and they're both HDR. This is just what the TV is showing. And so when you're looking at the C2, you're seeing a lot of that fire, a lot of those flames become diluted. And what really was crazy to me is at the bottom where he's blowing the flame, that part was actually brighter and kind of more vibrant than the top and I've never noticed that before in the scene in any TV but it comes across very clearly and cleanly on the S95B it is definitely on a different level in terms of fire like if you love fire effects you're gonna really love the S95B all right, along those same lines, I'm going to show you a gaming example this time with fire involved. This is from Elden Ring. Now, I want you to pay attention closely to the way that the spells are illuminating here. And I'm going to cast multiple spells for you guys. Feel free to stop it at any point. I will pause the freeze frame here in a second. I feel like everything on the C2 feels a bit muted when it comes to the spells that I'm casting. And we're just not getting the same effect that we are on the S95B. All right, so now I want to talk about the capabilities when gaming. Now, this TV is definitely my favorite gaming TV that I've played yet. So that's not a surprise since it's also my favorite TV yet. Um, but it does feel like gaming takes it to another level. And that's kind of tied into why this is the best TV. But it is remarkable at how clean it looks and how sharp everything looks but I have sharpness at zero from an angle it actually looks better than it looks from a distance and it's weird to say that but that's how clean the panel is it is really good there's no tinting at all to me I don't see any vertical banding for gaming it's one of the cleanest panels i've seen in my entire life which i think a lot of gamers care about because there's a lot of panning skies you know you are constantly scrolling in games i also want to say the color i've been touching on this but it's on a whole nother level with games as well it is definitely a thing of beauty okay my friends so i'm completely hyped completely hyped and i know this is actually not not right you you shouldn't do this you, you shouldn't be um so so happy about uh electronic product to be very honest but that's how it is i uh, i'm a nerd when it comes to tvs when it comes to yeah when it comes to electronic stuff okay like everything okay if i can get something new and especially tvs because i really like to i don't know why it's just a hobby okay it's a hobby and i'm so hyped about this TV, I can't even tell you. And I'm looking forward to get this TV as soon as possible. But right now, there's not even uh, the option to pre-order this TV in Australia. Not sure why. I hope this is not a bad sign. But um, I mean, it's also a little bit early, okay? To We, ha we still have time because, uh, yeah, anyway, I, I need to wait anyway. There's n nothing else what I can do because I'm not going to import this from, from USA or whatever. I don't want to do it. Um, 
Anyway, um, put in the comment section what you think about this TV. Maybe you own this TV already uh, because you uh, lucky people in the USA, they can actually order and buy this TV. So I'm very jealous actually, to be very honest. Uh, put in the comment section what you think about this TV and also um, put the downsides from this TV because there is not, uh, every TV has disadvantages, okay? The LG has disadvantages, this Samsung TV has disadvantages. There is not a, a single perfect TV out there, okay? And uh, we should know about the disadvantages as well. So put this in the comment section, whatever the, the issue is, I'm more than happy to read it and to bring this up in uh, future videos when I'm doing my testing side by side comparison uh, with the LG ZX, I'm more than happy to do um, yeah, testing and bring issues up because you know me, I, I, I'm I bringing issues up like Horizon Forbidden West issues, performance mode. I'm, I don't care. I do this. Anyway, okay. I think that's enough for this video. I say thank you very much for watching me. Do me the favor, like, share and subscribe. And again, a uh, big shout out to Keep It Classy Tech and Tech with KG. Please do or continue doing what you do because this is just great. Thank you very much. I see you guys next time.